Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Please be seated. The Helper is here. Our Advocate has come, and he is here to aid us now that our Lord has ascended to be with the Father. Jesus tells us in our Gospel reading that we're not going to see him for a while, and so, as is understandable... The disciples have been on a bit of a roller coaster, haven't they? First, Jesus is delivered up and put to death, and they're despairing and thinking everything is over. Then Jesus rises from the dead, and everything they believed about him is confirmed. And now Jesus is saying, I'm leaving, and you can't really go where I'm going yet. So to address their worries and concerns, our gospel reading teaches us about the promise that Jesus made to his apostles, his disciples, And then by extension, the church that he is establishing through them. That he is sending a helper. And today, we're celebrating the arrival of that helper. The promise fulfilled. So it is a joyous day of celebration. It is a day of promises fulfilled. And in some ways, it's actually the beginning of the church here on earth. The very same church that you and I are a part of today in 2021. What a gift. This gift that Jesus promised and we now receive. The gift of the knowledge that we are not alone, that God himself is with us. But that sort of begs the question today, what we're really learning from Jesus in the gospel isn't just the joyous reality that he's sending us the Holy Spirit to be our helper and our advocate, but he also goes into pretty pretty good detail about what exactly the Spirit is going to be doing. Why are we so happy that the Spirit is here? Well, let's dig into the text to find out what exactly does the Holy Spirit do. I think it's safe to say as Lutherans, Of the three people of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit is probably the one that makes us the most uncomfortable. He's the least quantifiable, he's the least predictable, and that's part of his nature. But in our gospel reading today, Jesus describes in pretty good detail what exactly the Holy Spirit is going to do for us. Now, if you were to ask a standard Christian, what does the Holy Spirit do? Our responses are usually correct, but they're usually fairly vague. Oh, that's, uh, you know, the Spirit of God that now lives in us, and He helps us, you know, believe the Word, and He helps us tell other people, right? So He's some sort of general evangelical aid or divine confidence booster when it comes to talking to other people about Jesus. And don't get me wrong, He definitely is those things. But He's so much more. That's only a small part of the whole task in which the Holy Spirit is here to do. So this I took from my father. This was the simple definition that he gave us in confirmation class about what the Holy Spirit does. And it's easy to remember. I still remember it after all. It's been a while. The Holy Spirit gives us the Jesus stuff. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He gives us the Jesus stuff. Yet in our gospel reading this morning, the text tells us how the Holy Spirit is going to do that how the Holy Spirit gives us the Jesus stuff. And it identifies three main things that the Holy Spirit is going to do when we look at the text. The first is somewhat surprising. He says that when the Holy Spirit comes, he's going to convict the world concerning sin, righteousness, and judgment. That's number one. The second thing he's going to do is guide us into all truth. And the third thing is that he's going to glorify Jesus. Right, so the first thing, he's convicting the world concerning sin, righteousness, and judgment. Second, guide us into all truth. And third, glorify Jesus. Now the first one's somewhat surprising because when you think of the Holy Spirit, you don't usually think of the law. Being convicted of sin, righteousness, and judgment. But that's what Jesus says the Holy Spirit is going to do when he comes into the world to be with the disciples as he's promised. But that's, in fact, what he does. Now, if you can remember, it's a little bit after our Acts 2 reading today. In the following verses, Jesus preaches, or not Jesus, Peter 
preaches his first sermon about Jesus to this gathering of many people. And if you remember what he said, it's not the easiest sermon to preach. He basically tells them that they're responsible for the death of the Son of God. Now, he does say that that was part of God's plan of salvation, but that had to sting. This Jesus whom you crucified, he's the Messiah, he's the Son of God, he was the one we were all waiting for. But notice that Peter doesn't, he's not able to say those words out loud until today, until he receives the Holy Spirit. Prior to receiving the Holy Spirit, Peter was scattered and lost and despairing like all the other disciples. The other part about this first thing that I think is really interesting is that the conviction of our sin is actually a part of God's love in Jesus. It is an act of love, and it reminds us of the second use of the law, that there's a mirror that the Holy Spirit shows us of ourselves, revealing the real state of things. And it sort of reminded me of the emperor's new clothes, if you've ever read that fable, where the emperor is convinced that he has on these wonderful new clothes, but in fact he's wearing nothing and he's walking throughout the streets and he has no idea that everybody is laughing at him because he's not wearing anything. right? And the act of love would be to show him a mirror so that he knows that he's not as he thinks he is. That's what the Holy Spirit does for us when he comes into the world to convict the world concerning sin. We do not believe in Jesus on our own. We can't even recognize our sinfulness on our own, but in God's mercy, he sent us the Holy Spirit who shows us the truth of what we are. And then he goes even further and shows us the state of righteousness that we are in, namely that you and I, we have zero righteousness. We have none. Now that may seem cruel at first, but what he's really getting at is he doesn't want us to look to ourselves for comfort, to look to ourselves for assurance, to look to ourselves for hope. Because in ourselves, we have none of those things. That's the truth that the Holy Spirit is revealing to us. And then there's some good news in the conviction part of the Holy Spirit. He's not just here to convict the world concerning sin and righteousness, but he's also here to inform us that that conviction has been applied to the ruler of this world as well. That in Jesus, the devil has been judged and defeated. No longer should we fear him, for Christ is victorious over him. And this kind of leads into the next one. That the Holy Spirit is going to guide us into all truth. Common imagery related to truth and falsity is being able to see and being blind. That before Christ comes along, we're blind. And if Jesus had left and not sent the Holy Spirit, the apostles, they might have been fine. But by what means are they going to perpetuate this truth to generations all the way up to 2021 in the United States of America? By means of the Holy Spirit. By means of this gracious gift we celebrate today that was sent to guide us into all truth. And Jesus points out that the Holy Spirit does not do this of his own authority or by his own words. But he says this, For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. Right? We go back to the Holy Spirit's job is to give us the Jesus stuff which means that he's here to tell us Jesus' words. In other words, he's not bringing any sort of new truths. All of God's plan of salvation is complete in Jesus, and the Holy Spirit's task is to point us to that truth, to guide us into that truth by repeating the words of our Lord Jesus, by bearing witness to what you and I have received in Christ. The Holy Spirit is going to keep the disciples Keep the church and keep you in the faith after Jesus ascends to heaven. 
So the Jesus stuff here is that Jesus is the Savior, he's the Messiah, who lived a perfectly righteous life and died on the cross to pay for the price of the sins of the world. He has risen from the dead victorious, and his victory is yours by faith. That is the truth that the Holy Spirit has guided you into, and not one of his own words or authority, but the truth of the words and authority of Jesus, the Son of God, who has done all of these things for you. And now the third thing the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit glorifies Jesus. There's a little overlap here with the truth. He's guiding us into truth, not of his own authority of Jesus. And by virtue of doing that, he glorifies Jesus. He's drawing our attention to Jesus. If I were to describe one of you as glorifying Jesus, it would be the act of not getting people to focus on you, but instead focusing on Christ which makes a lot of sense. If the Holy Spirit is helping us when we evangelize, giving us the courage to speak the gospel in the face of opposition or the fear of rejection, it stands to reason that the Holy Spirit would be pretty good at doing that for us. And that's what he does when he glorifies Jesus. The verse in our reading says this, He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. I'm pretty sure that is the verse that my dad based that definition of the Holy Spirit's work on to give us the Jesus stuff, right? He takes what belongs to Jesus and declares it to you. Now, maybe you guys already know this, but some people may not know what belongs to Jesus. And so Jesus tells his disciples what that is. In the very next verse, he says, all the father has is mine. Therefore, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. So think about that, where we end with him glorifying Jesus and declaring what is Jesus's to us, and where we started with the conviction according to sin, righteousness, and judgment. All of the things that the Holy Spirit begins by revealing to us that we do not have, he then gives to us from Jesus. He guides us to the the truth of Christ, and the truth is this joyous message that even though you have so much sin worthy of judgment, even though you have no righteousness in the eyes of God, the Holy Spirit takes what is Jesus's and declares it to you. What does Jesus have that you don't? He has a perfect life lived under the law. He has a perfect righteousness He has victory over death, and he has life eternal. What is the Holy Spirit doing with those things? He's taking those things which belong to Jesus and declaring them to you. By what Jesus has done, the Holy Spirit reveals this glorious truth to you that all those things that you lack, you now have been given. You have been given forgiveness of your sins. You have been given life eternal. You have been given a perfect righteousness which is not your own, but in fact Jesus is given to you by the gracious gift of faith. In short, what our scripture teaches us today, what we celebrate in joy on Pentecost, is that the Holy Spirit is yours and is essential to the daily life of the Christian. By the gracious work of the Holy Spirit, you and I are convicted of our sin And we're taught to look to Jesus rather than ourselves. We're also taught that the ruler of this world, all those fears and anxieties about what might happen if this world wins, are put to rest because the ruler of this world has already lost and been judged in Jesus. And the Holy Spirit hasn't come to teach me new truths, but to reveal to me the truths of Jesus. So that just as the disciples are saved by faith in Christ all those years ago, you and I are saved by that same faith, are given that same truth, are given the same Jesus stuff. So today, celebrate. Say a prayer of thanksgiving for the reality of the Holy Spirit in your life. For he makes the need for Jesus in your life known to you. He turns the work of repentance into a gracious gift of God's love. For how is it that you knew here to come and confess your sin? For it was graciously revealed to you 
through this helper we celebrate today. But he doesn't stop there. He gives you what belongs to Jesus. And that bears repeating. I'll say it one more time. Here is what has been declared to you by the Holy Spirit. Victory over death. Forgiveness of sins, all of them. Life eternal and a perfect righteousness which grants you salvation before God. A restored relationship made right in the eyes of our Heavenly Father. So celebrate today. Be joyous, for you have been brought a wondrous gift in the Holy Spirit because he's brought you the Jesus stuff. In the name of Jesus, amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until he comes again to make all things new. Amen. Please rise.